one. Fill you in on the rules as we go. Ten point must scoring system. Three knockdown rule applies. Has not been waived. Mandatory eight count, of course. Three judges score the fight. The referee with no voice in the scoring. The referee is Octavio Myran of Mexico. The judges, one from Nicaragua, one from Mexico, one from Phoenix, Arizona. It is a smallish ring, which would seem to favor Aguaya. 17 and a half foot ring. First round action. WBC Super Featherweight Crown at step. For those of you who know boxing, Aguayo had no difficulty making the weight this time. Though at 130, stayed with his trunks on. Castillo fights mainly as a featherweight and kind of moves up in class here. 129 and three quarters. Castillo, clever boxer. Aguayo with the long left, always looking for the opening. Straight up fighter. Can on occasion look somewhat wooden, mechanical, against a lot of movement. That's what Philomar Fernandez showed him in New York when Aguayo was upset in the nine title bout, losing the decision. Thirty seconds left. The countdown, the lower right hand corner of your screen. First round action. Castillo getting a raw, getting in his first left. End of the round is at hand. Round two, first round uneventful. Suddenly a right lead that caught Castillo by surprise and hurt him. Castillo now trying to attack. That could be terribly dangerous. Calling a line from the great referee Arthur McCanny, I have often observed that Aguayo has razor blades in either glove. He is a cutting puncher, though himself susceptible to the cut. Second round action. WBC Super Featherweight Crown at stake. Stick and move, Proven. One really effective blow in the bout thus far. A right lead by Aguayo to open this round. Castillo's dilemma is evident. How to get inside and score when the other man has the much better reach. Again, a good right by Aguayo. And yet avoid the knockout power of Aguayo. I'd like to wear Aguayo down. Could have a tendency toward fatigue because for a long time he's been talking about becoming a lightweight. And as I noted in round one, has had 
weight making difficulties in the past, though oddly not this time. Move, move. of the round. And you will hear the crowd roar every time Castillo appears to be doing anything. Well, they can't measure punch impact from where they sit. Inside 30 seconds now, round two. Tucson in the community center for round three. Alexis Arguello, defending WBC Super Bantamweight champion in the white trunks. Tall, 5'10", straight up fighting, using that left as you saw. Steele got his own left hand. He is the crowd favorite. Manifested in that miss with the left. The absence of reach. Notice the way Arguello picked off three straight Castillo would be lefts with his right glove. Castillo was trained by Beto Martinez, who also trained Arturo Leon. One who used movement to last 15 rounds, though he lost in Las Vegas last year to Aguayo. So Martinez knows the way. Whether the fighter can execute is another thing. is also an intelligent fighter, Castillo, because he has the good sense not to go berserk in trying to attack. He watches for an opening. He is a wary fighter, aware of and respectful of his opponent's power. Counting down within the last 30 seconds of round three. Castillo with a right lead that scored. Back live, the bell just sounded for the start of round four in what is proving thus far to be an interesting fight. Again, the right lead by Aguayo in the white trunks. Ruben Castillo in the dark trunks. Interesting because Castillo is fighting sagely. yelled at that, but Arguello picked off the blow. Steady movement by Castillo against that straight up, straight ahead style of Arguello. And the graphic tells you what's at stake. Super featherweight crown, WBC version. Just 
Still the most damaging blow of the fight was the right lead by Aguayo to open the second round. An excellent last 30 seconds in the third round by Castillo. Yeah, right there. Castillo, when hurt, fights back immediately. Again, the crowd yelled for the Castillo right, which was picked off by the Aguayo left glove. end of this round we will have a station break i should like to alert our stations along the line this is fourth round action thus far a good round for aguayo see again the crowd roared but both blows did not reach their mark so castillo's problem remains basic and constant how to get inside that superior reach. Counting down now to the end of round four. be right back with more of the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship Aguayo against Castillo after this word from our local stations. Ivan Tucson, round five, just underway. No knockdowns yet, no real damage done. Once Castillo seemed hurt by an Aguayo right lead, that was in the second. In the fourth, briefly, he was stung, though not staggered, by an Arguello combination. Meanwhile, he uses steady movement, as you can see, looking for openings to counteract the opponent's longer reach and to score effectively. It's not easy, though he is very much the popular favorite in this arena. Castillo's best blow of the fight. An excellent, sharp right against the left side of Arguello's face. That was an evidence of what he must do. Get inside, score, and get quickly out. He did it very efficiently there. That long right missed, though it excited the crowd. Inside, Aguayo scored. Fifth round action, WBC Super Featherweight Crown at stake. Aguayo the defender. with a quick word of caution from Octavio Maran of Mexico, the official. Make sure to keep the blows up. At the time of the caution, he had scored with a left to the stomach and a right to the head. Side, 30 seconds. This time round five. Guayo looking for the one opening. So far not able to find it. Castillo making an effective fight. The bell about to sound, but Referee from Mexico, Myron, 
wiping off Castillo. Personally, subjectively, I have this fight scored even up till now. Aguayo has not been able yet to capitalize on his superior reach and punch. Remember, I said movement sometimes flustered him and referred to his upset loss to Fernandez in New York. Non-title decision belt, that was. With his punching power, he must be ever on guard. A good right by Castillo, and Arguello felt it. Now in the progression of rounds, Castillo is more effectively administering punishment with his right. Witness the last round. Steadily moving, not giving at any time up till now, Arguello a target. And Arguello is troubled by the style. Arguello in his first good combination of the round right there. Aguayo, despite making the weight easily this time, or maybe because of it, gives the appearance of being somewhat dried out. Forty-five seconds left in round six. Castillo must be constantly wary. See the countdown in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Fought effectively off the ropes there, Castillo did. Counting down to the end of round six. We're back live in the Tucson, Arizona Community Center, round seven. White trunks, Aguayo, dark trunks. Ruben Castillo putting on a very interesting and clever boxing exhibition against the taller, but the much longer reach, defending champion Aguayo. Castillo appears so young, so fresh, there's been no diminution of his foot movement since the bout started. Roundhouse left by Castillo. style unchanging. Straight up, straight ahead. Looking for the opening. You earlier saw the right that Here missed. Castillo ducking under it. And that exchange wound up with Castillo in a flurry. Good right, good left by Aguayo. Aguayo fighting much better in this round. Putting his punches together, beginning to score. We're a minute 58 into the round. Now we 
they've got less than a minute left in round seven. In a way, this is a reminder of Aguayo's victory over Chacon. For seven rounds, Chacon fought as Castillo has been fighting. And then in the eighth, the one slip, and Aguayo had him. Castillo was fortunate there. That right did not land flush. Castillo's left was down. An unguarded moment. That did not connect. Stick and move. Stick and move. Oh, well, no. Did not score. A good left by Castillo. Scored. The end of the round, again at hand. We're back live in Tucson. The gun just sounded for the start of the eighth round in what has been a very surprising and very good boxing contest. Made so by the vigor, the determination, the youth, the boxing style, and the intelligence of 22-year-old Ruben Castillo. All of that is up till now. El Castillo scored with a good left just before the round ended, round seven. This is round eight. In the last round, Arguello seemed to be measuring the opponent, putting his punches together, and that might have been just the trace of the beginning of fatigue in Castillo, but that remains to be seen. Remember, Arguello is a 15-round fighter. He's proven it. Twice, he's knocked out Escalera, a tough cookie, in the 13th round. Castillo got in a good right. Castillo fought out of the corner then, but he was in a dangerous spot. Since he trains there, the crowd grows in its fervor for him, but they often raw when there is no reason to. Forty-five seconds left in this the eighth round. And Castillo's fight plan keeps him going. Enables him to score, as you saw there. Coming on again with a late in the round flurry. Still steady foot move. So if there was the beginning of fatigue in the seventh, it has not evidenced itself in the eighth. Here is the end of the eighth round. Round nine, Cuyo Hernandez in Alexis Aguayo's corner, now getting a little concerned. Telling Alexis to move a little bit more. Telling Arguello to box Castillo. Interesting juxtaposition. Want to alert our stations along the line that at the end of this round we'll take a station break. Barring such a flow of action that would make it impossible. This is round nine. The officials can become very important in a fight like this. They are, respectively, Ricardo Rizzo of Nicaragua, Jose Juan Guerra of Mexico, and Bob Cox of Phoenix, Arizona.
base, and then he will score. And the crowd rooting for him goes crazy. Up till that flurry, Arguello had been dominating the round. A good counter left. This kid can count a bunch. He's showing us a lot of ring savvy for a kid of 22, but he has had 44 professional fights. And reportedly, though you can't ever trust those records, 50 amateur fights where he was 48 1 and 1. He's 44 and 0 as a pro. seen going in the essential advantage five inch edge in reach another warning from the referee Tavio we'll be right back with more of the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship Aguayo against Castillo after this word from our local stations. Round 10, just starting, and Castillo starting quickly, trying to score with the left after a right lead. The crowd utterly taken with Castillo. And he didn't think this fight would go this long. It has turned out to be a deli. Comes at a time when boxing has been clouded by three deaths. The first last November 28th. One in just the recent days and one in between. Hopefully. Oh, a good right that stung Castillo. Hopefully, though, nothing can take back what's been done and quite apparently in New York we will have great new protective measures for the fighters oh that was a good left by Aguayo Castillo must not get wild and he showed a tendency to because the punch remains in the Aguayo fist it is there always it is a latent thing and it is for the weight level simply overwhelming Let's say the kid Castillo fights out of the corner well. But Aguayo has landed two very punishing blows in this round. See, the crowd roars over those, but in truth, Castillo's counter punches did not land then, whereas Arguello's straight left did. Good right lead by Castillo, his best blow of the round. Arguello using the left very effectively in this round, very effectively. Remember, this is the 10th round. And as we move inside of 30 seconds, it is a very effective round for Aguayo. Trying to get to Castillo. The end of the round. The center, it is round 11. It is a corking fight for the Super Bantamweight Championship, WBC version. Aguayo, the defender, going against an opponent who has been giving him a very good deal of trouble. Ruben Castillo, age 22, five inches short of reach, fighting warily, doing some excellent counter punching, employing. Steady movement up until this round, right there, right lead. Caught him, and now he is being very cautious, and he should be. Because in the last round, he could have gone. He got careless. He tried to take the attacking lead through some wild punches, and Aguayo immediately capitalized. Now he's trying to fight back in a flurry. 
What counts here is the effectiveness with which he punches. Aguayo is measuring him. Now Aguayo is in command of this fight. He took command totally in the last round. And the kid is hurt against the ropes. We told you, Aguayo is a 15-round fighter. He's proved it. KO'd Escalera twice, each time in the 13th round. Kid must get off the ropes. He is now looking to hold on. Wildly trying to fight back. The crowd mistakes it for a display of strength. This is the 11th round. There is no movement in the feet in this round. Castillo still against those ropes in the corner. He faces potential destruction that way. Aguayo throwing blows, and then the kid goes down. It was inevitable. A keen kid putting up a marvelous demonstration. Not only of guts, a vigor and determination. Oh, I hope he stops it. He did. This fight is over. And for the seventh time, Alexis Aguayo, he of the devastating punches, has successfully defended his super bantamweight crown. This was a corking fight for which nothing but kudos, plaudits, must go to the youngster who fought him so gamely, Ruben Castillo. But the foot movement was taken out of him in that ninth round when suddenly Arguello got the opening he wanted through the mistakes made by Castillo, trying to attack too hard. The official time, two minutes in throw. No foot movement there. He had tired in the ninth round from two critical blows and then finally it was inevitable he had to go down but well, what a fight that kid 